told us this morning, and you will see in your packet there is an absolute point where it says part two. Thank you, Brother Tim. Part two, so don't start there. But before part two, tell me something that you learned this morning. And we're going to get the mic so we could be on recording. I hope it says that I've done a good job teaching. Amen. You got the packets in front of you guys. Start telling me some things that the Lord said this morning. Yeah. Uh, Mother Walter stood up and got the mic. You can, you can take it off and share it at your table. So there's one for each side. Go ahead. I learned this morning that um, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, gives us the power to be sanctified. That's right. Without it, we cannot be sanctified on our own. Amen. 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 Good lesson. Amen. Who else is going to teach us? Deacon Joe, you going to teach us something? I, I know it said. Use the mic. We're going to try to get it in the recording. It's right there in front of you, bro. Oh. There you go. <laughs> Be holy, because God is holy. Uh huh. Not a, a little holy. Be a holy, holy, which is all total holy. Total holy. Good, good. Somebody else. Right. It's not to be compared. It's not competitive, but it's strictly according to the holiness of God. Amen. Pass it to Sister Louise so she got her hand up. You're helping us. Now, remember, say it so people are learning something, especially if they didn't remember. <laughs> Go ahead, Mother Louisa. Sanctification is God's way. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's good right there because it's the will of God that we be sanctified. She said the sanctification is the will of God. Amen. You can't do it on our own. It's by the Holy Spirit. Amen. She's agreeing with Mother Walden in that truth. Amen. Mm -hmm. It's a process. Amen. First you come clean with all you know to do, and then God sanctifies you wholly. Mother Collins, you have the mic. Yes, uh, you are to embrace it. Oh. Embrace the concept of sanctification enthusiastically. Yes. What does that mean, Mother Collins? With your whole heart. Whole heart. With your whole heart. Yeah. W-H-O-L-E. Mm -hmm. The whole heart. Enthusiastic. That means don't be griping. Don't be groaning. Oh, Lord. <laughs> now what God got me to do. Now I say, okay, Lord. Yeah. Amen. I remember when I was running um, all those programs at PDAC all those years. It's been 22 years. I would get up in the morning exhausted from the previous day. Say, God, thank you for the opportunity to rise up to do purpose. Mm -hmm. Amen. When you get to the point where you're in God's purpose, even the hard work isn't laborious on your spirit. You're enthusiastic. Somebody else, teach us something else the Lord said this morning. Amen, Sister Cook. Um, I was going to say the same thing that she said, but it also gives us a, a, a new journey, a new path. Mm -hmm. um, we are set free from our past. Yeah, and it get, as you're set free from your past and you're given a new pathway. Amen. Mother Louisa, you got some more. Amen. Pick up your mic. That's right, we're teaching one another. Mm -hmm. It doesn't help if only my voice is saying it, right? Amen. Go ahead. Uh, sanctification and covered uh, the, the will of God, the faith of God mm -hmm. in our lives. Right. So it, it actually reveals and it presents to us the will and the purpose of God in our lives. Sanctification is how we get there. Amen. You got something else to get, Joe? It's an everyday thing. Oh, I love it. Daily. Daily. Don't miss a day. Mm -hmm. day, do it again. Right. You got to stay on that road. You know, don't be jumping off. Say, oh, I don't feel like being sanctified today. I'm got to be daily every day. Right. Every day we're pursuing the journey. And we talked about this morning that if you get off the trail, or you get off the journey, you got to go back to the start. So it's hard to pick up where you left off. Right. Because what happened is something that's left from your failure, from your detour that you cannot take on the journey. So you got to go all the way back. And I didn't say all that, but let me say it again. The reason why you can't pick up where you left off is because when you left, you were contaminated. Oh, wow. What does sin do to you? It contaminates you. So you can't just pick up where you left off and keep going because that contamination is still there. You got to go back to the sanctification start. 
right? Repent and get clean. Does that make sense? Let me say that again, because some people do that, and you've watched uh, some interesting dis- decisions about pastors that failed, and they jump back in and been pastors, or, or musicians that have failed, or saints that have failed, and missionaries that have failed, and, and then they jump back into their, and you'll find that you, and, and those of us that have been in church a long time, you'll remember, they didn't make it. Because you can't jump back in on God. Mm-hmm. Mm, gotta go all the way back. You got to go back to sanctification because you've been contaminated. Mm-hmm. That's why you go back and repent. Mm-hmm. Not because you're a terrible person and you make terrible mistakes. It's because if you continue with that contamination, remember something made you leave the journey. Mm-hmm. And when you left, if you think the enemy didn't attack you, then you don't understand life. If you don't think that the enemy attached something to you, then you don't understand life. But when you walk off the trail of sanctification, you are now contaminated. And if you continue without repentance, without going back to the foundation, you're going to take that with you. And how many have said, well, I was trying to, I was trying to, you know, you can only try. Just go back. It's not a big deal. Go back and get that washed off of you. Amen. 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 Yeah. So even if you've been in the ocean and when you go swimming, you need to go take a shower. Because you got chlorine and salt on your skin, right? When you get out, (laughs) you get out of the fresh water, you need to go back and get cleaned up again. Amen. Amen. I want somebody to share that at your table. I'm going to come and listen because that's an important point because people think that when the church don't let you come back and be all you could be, that we just being mean. But the fact is that we have to make sure that we don't nurture contamination yes. Yes. We, so we're not just being mean mm-hmm. we're trying to get you right yes. and you keep dipping and dabbing you can't keep going you gotta go back now God doesn't mind you going back while you're working through your habits and while you're working through your stuff but you can't keep going like nothing happened mm-hmm. because then you'll find out it'll catch up with you the Bible says surely your sin will find you out yes. it doesn't mean you're behind it says the things that come with that mm-hmm. are going to catch up with you mm-hmm. How many have had things catch up with you? (laughs) It's always going to catch up with you because the contamination of sin is made to do that, to deteriorize you, to make you less than perfect in God's sight and less than acceptable before him. Somebody else, I want you to talk about that. I want to talk about the contamination. That was a revelation. So right now, talk about contaminations. Somebody share, preach to your tape. I'm coming to listen. <laughs> I didn't ask you to condemn nobody. I said, preach about the truth. <laughs> Tell them, I asked them if he'd been contaminated. You'll be walking around asking people they contaminated. <laughs> but that experience. Right? And you've seen TV evangelists or come back and still be. And the thing is, you can't. You got to go back. Right? And they feel humiliated, but it's only the humiliation of sin. The saints aren't humiliated, neither is God, right? You're only humiliated because of the sin, not even of self-condemnation, is it? Mm -mm. It's sin. Good. Did everybody here get the message? Good. All right. Deacon Joe started out, are you contaminated? I said, I did not ask you to ask people if they contaminated. I told you to teach the truth about contamination. Amen. I love it. I heard at that table, even if you wanted to, you can't fix it. You got to let God fix that, right? And the Bible says, we spoke about that this morning, that God then will give you strength not to do that again. You don't get strength not to do that again until you go back and repent. Good. A couple more minutes. Everybody good? All right. We're still in our review. We're still in our review. We're looking at what God said this morning as the truth of God. He talked about the journey. He talked about we just got a revelation about the contamination. And I'm glad God shared with that because that's not in my notes. That's why God gave us revelation there. Because some people really feel the church is mean. But the church now, you know, the church, God ain't mean. But sometimes people are mean. But the main point is that it's not that we want you to suffer and humiliate you. But if you walk down that road contaminated, it's going to catch up with you. Right. And I love you too much to watch you fall. Right. So we're ministering that to each other. I love you too much to watch you fall again. Amen. I see Mother Gardner has her mic. Mother Gardner is speaking. Yeah, you just got to talk louder, Mother. 
Revelation 2 and 5. Deacon Joe, hold up for a minute. Right, tell us that scripture again. Right, go ahead and talk about it. Amen. And I think you read in that scripture uh, that God said, do your first work over. That's what he's talking about, going back and repenting again, making sure you're clear. Yeah. Now, the thing is, if you've been on the journey, you might go forward a little faster than the first time, but you can't go forward at all till you go back and get that cleaned up. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank you for uh, sharing and teaching your table. So those principles are there and you're flipping through your um, sheet. Remember the scriptures that um, I read and that sanctification is the will of God, that first page. Amen. I want you each to look at those scriptures. John 17, 1 Thessalonians. Pick one. Amen. And tell me what God was teaching us in those. Because the Lord said these are the sanctification basics of showing you that it is the will of God that we be sanctified. Amen. You can pick it as a table or you can just pick one and talk about it. I'll give you just a minute and I'm going to read them to you. John 17 and 17 says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. And that's John 17 and 17. First Thessalonians 5, 23, 24 says, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, that W-H-O-L-L-Y, which means completely. And I pray your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Amen. Amen. And so we're looking at that scripture. Then 1 Thessalonians 4, 34, and any or all of you at your table can speak. Uh, this is our review. All right. Uh, that 1 Thessalonians 4, 33, the 4 says, For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye abstain from fornication. And remember, fornication is not just sin. Because when you look at Israel, God talked about Israel playing the harlot. That means that you're serving other gods. God counts it as fornication. You're having intimacy with somebody other than God. God says, so you putting somebody on a pedestal, uh, whether it's your children, your job, your spouse, uh, somebody you think well of, the TV evangelist with all the rings on his finger. I don't care who it is. God is looking for us not to have any other relationships except him. Right. So it does mean literally fornication, but it also symbolically means any other God, any other intimate relationship is not what he wants. So that first Thessalonians. Four, three to four, for this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. And look at that part. He's saying this whole process is going to give you strength so you know how to handle yourself. There are some things you can't do. There are some things you can do, but you can't do it a certain way. Right. Yep. Then John 17 and 19, it says, and for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. And the Leviticus 27 to 8, sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be holy, for I am the Lord your God, and ye shall keep my statutes and do them. I am the Lord which sanctify you. So we're talking about one where you're doing a part, and then God does another part. Here are the rules. These are our base scriptures. If you use the same scripture somebody has already spoken, you have to bring another point. I'm looking for you to give me two to three sentences. I don't need anybody to preach because this is just our review, righty? So those are our foundational scriptures. The objective is that you know and understand what those scriptures are saying. Who wants to start? Remember, you could do the same scripture, but you can't make the same point. Who's going to start? Sister Shirley, grab the mic. Tell us what scripture you're working with today. I'm going to be doing 1 Thessalonians 5, 23-24. Okay. In just a couple of sentences, give us a point of truth. The point of truth I love about this is, is pray God your whole spirit mm -hmm. and soul and body be preserved blameless, even your 
just say your mind. Right. He said your whole mind, body, and soul. And I feel that he's giving us a complete deliverance. You don't have to go back and forth for the same thing. Right. Give it up the first time and be over with. I have to go back and redo it again. Good, good. All right, good. You, again, you can use the same scripture, but not the same point. Remember, we need two to three sentences. Somebody else. If you don't volunteer, I will volunteer you. All right, Mother Walden, did you start? Um, what scripture are you going to work with? I am going to work with, I think, uh, Leviticus 20. Leviticus 20, 7 to 8. Uh -huh. All right. Um, it just brought to my mind the scripture that says that all things are lawful unto thee, but not all things are expedient. Let me pause. You can't talk when other people are speaking, guys. Pause. All right. Sorry, Mother. We didn't mean to be rude. We repent. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. When you're speaking, we want to listen to you. But while she's speaking, you can let her do that. Yes. <laughs> you use the mics again. We're trying to record, and sometimes during the recording, we can't hear the, the audience. So... Uh, so we're working with that Leviticus 20, mm -hmm. and what are you saying again? And so I, I was saying that, I mean, put me in the uh, mind of the scripture, that all things, and it's found in 1 Corinthians 6 and 12, all things are lawful, mm -hmm. but all things are not expedient. So with all the things that are approved and okay in the world, because we're sanctified, we can't do it. Right. And then you cannot do it. Right. And all things are lawful to me, but I will not be brought under the power of any of them. So because it's okay, the world says it's okay, you can do it, you can go out, you can party, you can have a boyfriend, you can have a girlfriend, you know, it's okay to be gay. And they say you could smoke weed now and everything. We, do all kinds of things. we don't care what the law said. We go with what God said. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that. Amen. Who's next? Remember, don't reread the scripture. Give us your thought. Sister Cook. So we did John 17, 19. Okay. Um, and what is your thought on it? My thought is that he gave himself for us um, basically to set us free, but we needed to go back to and repent mm -hmm. of our past in order for us to continue moving forward. Right. Right. And the repentance is just sincere. You don't have to agonize. You don't have to lay on the floor and roll and cry. You just have to be sincere. Amen. Yes. You got to mean what you say. And true repentance is saying you're sorry and you're sorry because you offended God and that you won't do it again. I'm sorry, that last one. And that you won't do it again. Right. So God says, I'm going to strengthen you when you come back and repent for your mistake. I'm going to strengthen you against that. So that means God now is giving you that lesson and the power to let that lesson manifest in you. And manifestation says what? Come alive to be part of you. So you don't have to have that lesson twice. Right. God is going to give you strength. Right. The enemy wants to self condemn us and say we can't do we can't do. No, you can't do it. But the Holy Ghost can do it through you and in you. Amen. Let's get one more thought on that. Somebody else. Any one of those scriptures is God, God said that this is his foundation for us to understand that it's the will of God that we be sanctified. All right, Deacon Joe. Okay, I'm going to Leviticus 20. The 20, Leviticus 20. Uh, it says that uh, you have to keep God's statutes of God's law. Right. God's law, but God's law. And he will sanctify you. Right. Right. So it's not just a repentance. Now you're determining. Read up on the word. How are you going to know the rules? You got to read the rule book. Right. What's the rule book? The Bible. Right. It's also the blessing book and the healing book and the deliverance book. But it's also the guideline it is the book. There's none to compare. Amen. And if you ask God for understanding, when I was a child, I got saved as a child and uh, the, no one took me seriously. And uh, so that I asked him, I said, I can't understand the word. Would you teach me? And uh, of course, my wonderful pastor said, go to Sunday school. Well, I was teaching Sunday school. <laughs> I was teaching all the children's classes and mother. It didn't matter if there was only one person in class. He wanted to teach that class separate. from the, So I would have six kids in six classes. <laughs> And then the review thing we do, we've done that for years and centuries in Kojic. Uh, and we had to get up and had to review each of them individually. Mm. Yes. So it says, OK, I'm really teaching too much to learn anything because I got to teach all these <laughs> lessons. But even as a youngster uh, asking God. But I remember sitting at the dining room table and reading the word of God. 
Amen. There's not a, a book in the Bible that you cannot read. People get all afraid of Genesis and Levit Leviticus and Lamentation and Revelation. Those are, Revelation is the easiest. Remember, re Revelation means reveal. It's a book that's revealing, <laughs> right? So it's easier. Now, you could be afraid if you ain't saved, <laughs> but, but it's not harder. It's not harder because Revelation is a book of revealing, right? It's revealing, it's explaining things, right? And so when people build up those ideas, they come from the enemy that wants you not to understand the truth of God. Amen? Amen. Right, so we need to study to show ourselves approved unto God. We're going to stop that part of the review right there, and let's flip the page. Amen. Remember, I left it, um, there should be spaces for you, write that. Uh, let's look at the definition of sanctify. Can somebody redefine sanctification? And again, on the outline paper, I put two um, resources, but it can uh, actually be anywhere that you have it. Uh, Wikipedia will have it. Whenever you're studying, you're preparing your message, make sure you first of all get valid resources but also that they align with what you're saying amen it's confusion when people start reading definition that has nothing to do with what they're saying and you can acknowledge other uh, parts of the definition you know there's a noun and a verb and whatever other part of the speech uh, definition there is but which one are you working with are you working with the action do you work with the verb are you work, work, working with the state of being then you're working with the noun amen and that helps you when you're ministering the Word of God. Uh, so sanctification, all right? Don't read it. Tell me what it means. Don't read it back to me, but tell me what it means. I'm going to ask that Mother Gardner, Deacon Joe, and Mother Walter not say anything. And Sister Shirley, let's get somebody else talking. All right? Mother Luiso. <laughs> she put her hand up on Timothy. She knows. Speak, girl. <laughs> say what you see. Yes. And it's not just set apart, it's set apart for God's purpose, right? So you not only have a setting apart, but you have for God's purpose. We're going to talk about the purpose tonight because people seem to be very confused about what God's purpose is for you. There is a general purpose for all people. There is a general purpose for all believers, right? And then there is a specific purpose to your life, right? And you know, no use trying to uh, maximize on your personal purpose if you haven't done your general purpose. So what are the, what are the general purposes of God for his people? That's not a purpose, but it is a requirement. Got to be clean. Purpose is something that you're doing for his benefit. Being clean is for your benefit. I would say being saved. Hmm? Being saved is your benefit. All yours. That's Jesus' blessing to you. Love one another. Love one another is all God's blessing to you. What is his purpose? Souls. See how the enemy will do that? And it's not a, a sin, but we, we focus everything about God on us. And we, I think it was last week I spoke that. You're already going to heaven. Why are you still working on that? Don't you believe you gave your life to Christ? Right? Now, staying saved is your assignment, but that's for your benefit. Because if you don't stay saved, you don't get to go to heaven. Right? <laughs> right? But if you get saved, you're going to heaven. Read the Bible. There are no more requirements. Give your life to Christ, you get to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. Right? The thing is, the things on this earth are here to tempt us and to destroy us and deter us from the will of God. And that's why we have to sanctify so we can stay strong against the wiles of the enemy, as the Bible says. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. God is not impartial, I mean, hasn't done a partial work for you. You are saved and ready to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. All the sanctification is that we get stuff out that won't take us out of God. Right? Get it out so we don't get taken out of God. Amen. If it stays in, you might not stay saved. Right? And we got to stay saved to when Jesus come. Yeah. Right? Whether he comes for you personally, <laughs> get by a truck, or if he comes in the rapture. Right? That's all, <laughs> that's all our concern is right now. A lot of things are going to happen when the saints are caught up in the rapture. And a lot of people focus on that, but listen, the main point is try not to be here when that happens. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't need to worry about the 144,000. That's after, mm. right? Right now, we're trying to just make sure when Jesus comes, we are ready, right? 
But we don't have to worry about being saved or going to heaven because you gave your life to Christ. It's done. What you're battling against is the enemy who's trying to get you off track. Yeah. You're not even battling God. Nope. Sometimes you're not even battling yourself. It's the devil's job to yep. steal, kill, and destroy. Why? Because he's mad and vindictive. He got kicked out of heaven and he don't get salvation. He don't get a break. He don't get to repent. He gone. gone. And what he has decided is that he's taken as many souls with him. Look how many souls die before they get saved. That's the enemy trying to rob those souls of opportunity to be saved. Now be mindful that God has promised to send his word. So they probably had an opportunity somewhere in their life, but they didn't do it. Mm -hmm. But the enemy is trying to snatch them before they give their life to Christ. The Bible says that God says all souls are mine. These are God's souls. Yes. And he's just trying to snatch them out when they do the mass killings, when we have all these wars and things like that. The devil's just trying to take people out. Mm -hmm. Right? So they don't get a chance to be saved because he's mad. You know how people are when they're mad. Mm. They be trying to make you as miserable as they are. <laughs> but the devil is a professional. He's going to try to take as many people with him as he can. Right, so sanctification is God's will for us, and we are separated unto his purpose. I want to make sure I don't lose time because I want to talk about purpose tonight. All right, any other person want to contribute to the sanctification description, definition on there? And then we went to 2 Timothy, and we're going to talk about embracing uh, willingly and enthusiastically, meaning that you have to want this. Salvation is not a forced action. It is a willful action. You want it. It's will. It's by your will. Amen? And you can let people uh, make you feel condemned if you want, but if you don't want to be saved, you ain't going to be saved. I don't care how many times you ask Jesus to forgive you because it's with the heart man believeth unto salvation. So what you're saying has to match your heart, right? So don't let people, I used to get upset when people dragging people to the altar. How do you like someone dragging you to the altar? <laughs> most, of, most of the time those people come to you and say come up here and let go pastor pray for you I've had it done I've had parents drag the children up come on let go pastor pray for you right now how much they gonna receive right if they if they didn't have any respect for you they slam you right there dragging them up you don't drag people Bible says with loving kindness have I drawn thee he said that we can snatch them as out of the fire meaning that we can get them right before the enemy gets them right we keep praying for them and pleading for their lives and asking God to put something in their way that they would come and let them remember the scriptures and the prayers of the saints for them, right? right. And then we ask God to save them. But nobody, you don't drag nobody to the altar. Yeah, how would you like somebody to force somebody, force somebody to love you, right? And the Lord, now have mercy, force somebody to, to feed you. I wouldn't eat it. Somebody forced to feed you. I wouldn't eat it. Right? It's like in those restaurants. You better pray with that food. All right. Foundation. So we went all the way through there. We have 1 Corinthians. Let's read that on page 3 together out loud. 1 Corinthians 1, 1 through 3. Let's read it. Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and Sosthenes, our brother, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints. Now, do you think he's being clear? To them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus. He said, let me make sure you know who I'm talking about. And you are called then to be saints. And turn the page. And that second part is with all that every place Call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. He's talking about all the people who would dare to be any place, whether it's your place, my place, anybody's place. He said, if you're calling on the name of the Lord, somebody say, I am sanctified. Our supporting scripture is that one that says, we know that all things work together for good. We went through that. And then we did our principal scripture. You look at that, Ephesians 1, right? And we look at what God is saying and, in that. And again, this is just our review. We want to get to part two. Then Ephesians 1, 18 and 19. Let's read that one together. The eyes of the, your understanding being enlightened, 
that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Look at God saying, I'm trying to be clear. God says, I am working my power on your behalf. You need to understand and have your eyes enlightened that this process is a partnership. This process is a partnership. God wants you to be sanctified. You want to be sanctified. God wants you to be holy. You want to be holy. It's a partnership. It is not an isolated event that you have decided to attend to. God says, I am in partnership with you, and I want you to be enlightened about that. I want you to know that there is a hope in the calling of God on your life. This must mean that everybody got a calling. Yes. Everybody has a calling. The lay member thing ain't in the Bible. There's no such thing as a lay member. I'm going to pause. <clears throat> There's none. Everybody's ministers in Christ Jesus. Read the scripture. There's no lay members. It's the devil's excuse for you to do nothing in church. <laughs> and what did we do? We adopted it. We adopted the enemy's assignment on God's people. He said, I'm going to give some of y'all permission to sit in the back seat. Make sure you sit in the back row because you're just a lay member. Make you want to take a nap. Right? You're just a lay member. It's not in the Bible. Find it and let me know. That's a church organization thing. And whether we adopted it from the world or even from tradition, a lot of times other denominations has influence on different people, uh, but that is not in the Bible. Everybody is a minister of Jesus Christ, right? Our goal is soul winning. Everybody is a soul winner. Mm -hmm. Now, we can do that, and I'm not going to teach it all today, but there is a difference with calling and election, right? Election is me being close pastor. I was elected. That is something that was assigned to me. But my calling is evangelist, right? You need to know your calling and your election. Deacon Joe was uh, elected a deacon, right? But everybody is called to be soul winners. Everybody. That's our only job. Stay saved and win souls, right? Now we have all these ways to do it. You can do it through music, you can do it through dance, you can do it in preaching, you can do it in teaching, you can go out and, and witness, but everybody's supposed to witness. It's not an outreach thing. We only call it outreach to get people motivated. Everybody is outreach, right? Everybody is outreach. Everybody's supposed to be reaching out to somebody. I remember teaching you at one time that everybody has a perimeter of influence. And I won't teach that again. But there is somebody, there's a perimeter influence. That means there are people in your life that you have influence over that God has assigned for you to witness to. Right? How many go to the same checkout person in the grocery store? Right? They know your name. If they don't know your name, you know theirs because they got a name tag on. But you go to the same one, and now suddenly they're attaching to you. And they're telling you about the children. And they're telling you about their day. And tell them about their Thanksgiving uh, celebration. Now God is connecting you that you can win that soul. Right? We all have a perimeter of influence. Write that down. A perimeter of influence. And we always say that scripture that talks about enlarge my territory. That's what it is. The perimeter of influence of your ministry. Amen. And it's not always. Uh, I want to talk about uh, musicians or, or handymen. It's not always a handyman. It might be the handyman's daughter. It might be uh, the, the, the musician's grandmother. Right? So don't just think your circle of people who do what you do are your people of influence. Right, but guess what? When my children were growing up, I had influence over every child that came over to play with them. Mm. They were in my house. Mm. <laughs> I had a perimeter of influence on them. Amen? And so you need to understand that God will show you everybody you see is not in your perimeter, but everybody has someone assigned to them. Right? And so you don't have to go looking for souls to minister to. Everybody has some assigned to you. Right. And now you're going to I want, I'm going to pray in the name of Jesus. You start seeing them. 
You said, mm, that is. I always wonder if I had a sign on my forehead. Why are people always coming up to me? That's your, that they're assigned to you. You're, that's your perimeter of influence. That means your personality, the way you administer, is going to reach them. But the way I minister may not reach them. That's why God puts them in your perimeter, right? There are some people that just you're going to reach. And there are some people I don't reach. My own children, I believe I can't reach them, right? They all grown doing their thing, right? But I said, oh, God, give someone in their pathway, someone in, be in their perimeter, all right, so the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, the hope of this calling, the hope says, why are you anticipating something good? Isn't that what hope is? Anticipation of something good. That's what hope is when you anticipate something good is going to happen. That's what hope is. Anticipating. Yeah, thank you. I'm watching people take notes. There you go. All right, that's what hope is. So the hope, what you, the good thing you're anticipating about your calling, God says, I'm trying to explain to you. And then he says what? The riches of his glory, the glory of God is a manifest, manifestation, pres, manifested presence of God. That means when you feel him, when you know that he's in the room with you, he's always there, but that time when you have a knowing. I can feel God comforting me. I feel him in, in the room, right? It doesn't just happen at church, right? right? You should feel it in the car when you have to pull over. Say, oh, let me pull over. Got to praise, right? Most of the time I don't pull over. I just say, let me hold that. I'm going to drive and pay attention to the road. <laughs> Amen. But I love praying in my car. Yeah. And sometimes I think when I'm going, I don't always hit the music either. First, I like control over who's singing to me. So I like to play my playlist. But when I turn on Kirk Franklin's uh, series XM, sometimes I got to turn it right back off. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> the inheritance of the saints means there are some things you don't have to work for. Remember, the riches of his glory is something that he bestows upon you. But look at the inheritance of the saints is something that's already given to you. It's already yours. What is about an inheritance? You got to go get it. It's already yours. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us, Lord, who believe? Meaning God has shown you that he's got empowerment for you to be sanctified and to be effective in your perimeter. All right. So that's where we are. And now we're at part two. Go on and turn to page six. The sanctification uncovers your purpose. Somebody tell me, what is purpose? What is it when we say we want to live in our purpose? Anybody. If you're going to talk about it, we might as well define it. What does it mean, purpose? You know, people say stuff. I said, sometimes I can tell you I don't know what it means because you're using it wrong. Mm -hmm. All right. So what is purpose? So we all have the same page understanding. <coughs> purpose starts with what you're here for, right? Okay. Can I, I'm trying to kick you off. I got you started. Mm -hmm. Somebody else? Um, well, I'm, Purpose is purpose is not on there. I'm exp I'm just defining it. Right. Mm -hmm. So I said is what yeah is what God wants you to do. Your assignment yeah. is your purpose. Yeah. Mm hmm. Why is everybody looking for the purpose? They don't even know what it is. You got to know what your purpose is, right? Yeah. So the purpose of God because remember he said that we are, are, are set aside for His purpose. Mm -hmm. What is His purpose? Oh. oh my goodness! Thank you. <laughs> I said, God, I might as well sit down right now. Sit down, Cynthia. They ain't heard a word you said. Oh, my love. I was scared for a minute. <laughs> I've been talking for 25 minutes. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> I was like, souls. Soul. Souls. Souls is our purpose, right? That's the purpose of God. The kingdom of God is the, the bringing in of souls, right? So the presence of God is here that souls will be saved. Now, all the other things we talk about and think about in that are just our blessings. Mm -hmm. His presence, his empowerment, the, the ability to be saved and delivered and set free, to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That's all blessing. So I said, that's all blessing. That's all blessing. And everybody get that, right? It's just not the traveling evangelist to lay hands on the sick. All believers. Yes. Can somebody find that scripture for me? Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. He didn't say just for the evangelist. But look what we do to God. We just mess God up. He, we're trying to isolate the ability of God. He gave it to all of us. 
If you believe God and you pray for someone who's sick, God will honor that. All right? But you got to be what? Sanctified. <laughs> because that's where the power to do that comes from. Remember, remember I said the power of God toward us, usward? The power of God in us is what gives us the power. You ain't got no power yourself to raise the dead, to lay hands on the sick. It's from the power of God in you. All right. I feel like I'm teaching new lessons. This is not good sometimes. All right. So sanctification uncovers your purpose. And people are looking for your purpose, the thing that you're here for, the thing that uh, God has designed you to do. There are multiple scriptures that talk about that what God has designed us to do. But when we talk about purpose, we want to talk tonight about what are you supposed to be doing with your life? I'm just going to go straight there, okay? We can talk about other purposes and other things, but we're going to talk about what does God want you to do with your life? That purpose. So we're going to talk about that purpose. What does God want you to do with your life? That purpose. You got it? Did I say it three times yet? That purpose. What does God want to do? When you get up in the morning, what does God want you to do in his purpose? And those things are the things we're going to talk about. So when we get sanctified... We uh, are now uncovering all of the contamination. I love that word that God gave us. All the contamination that has come from being in sin. The Bible says we're born in sin. Deacon Joe, what is that scripture? Born in sin, shape of iniquity. What is uh, Deacon Joe? What is your favorite one? We all have sin. We all have sin. Right, right. So uh, that's what it is. We all have sin. So tonight we're going to. Symbolize uh, our purpose through sanctification uh, through a boiled egg. It is boiled. There's your boiled egg. All right. Now, somebody explain a boiled egg to me. What do we know about boiled eggs? It's cold because I kept it in the fridge. Mother Shirley, what do we know? Right, so there's a process for it to get boiled, right? And that's life, right? Life happens and, and we get boiled, <laughs> right? Life happens and we get boiled. Stuff happening and whether our core person, our real person, now has layers on it. Oh, and that's what wears us out, the layers of our life, right? And that's why you got to repent often because it takes away the layers, but if you're building up layers and you haven't repented, that means you haven't gotten saved yet. That means all the stuff that's happened is layering on top of your purpose. And that's why you can't find yourself. You don't know who you are. That's why you're the doormat and people can tell you anything. Right? Because your purpose is, is being inhibited by all of the layers. So what's on the first layer of this boiled egg? The shell. At your table, each table somebody's going to be designated to do one part on your table you have napkins and you have handy wipes and you have a uh, butter knife so if one person at your table I don't know what I'm going to do about this table because they got four people and there's only three parts somebody's in charge of cracking the shell okay all right y'all designated her if you're not willing give it back to them say you do it all right <laughs> Crack the shell. Now, I want you to get deep in revelation on me. Keep going. Take the shell completely off. While they're taking the shell off, what is happening if you think about our lives while God is trying to take the shell off? First of all, how are you getting, how is that getting broken up? How is the shell getting broken? Cracking it and tapping it. By, uh, yeah, it's going to pieces. But it's going to pieces because she's adding pressure. Right? So don't get upset when God adds pressure to your life because he's trying to what? Remember last week, we're going to do this. We're going to turn everything into a message. There we go. So the breaking of the shell is God breaking that outer core that has been layered on top of your life by sin. And look how sin, sin don't let go easy, does it? Look at her working. Y'all look at her. Write your messages. I think I made the back pages blank so you can write your little messages. Y'all writing a message while she's working because sometimes it comes off in big chunks. Right? And if you don't boil it right, and I, I, I couldn't remember, Brother Beasley, there's something about how you boil it, that it doesn't come out one piece. That's what I was trying for, and I think I did well. Yeah. Yeah. So talk about that. Talk about the revelation of the shell. It's hard to remove the 
right? Right? Write it down. It's hard to remove, right? It's going to come out in pieces. And you got to deal with every piece, don't you? Yes. Yeah, y'all write that stuff down. Y'all deep. Come on, be deep right now. Right? You got a place to put the shell. God has a place to catch all those pieces, right? So once you do that, you don't want it back on your egg. So you need to give that to God. As God begins to peel it, you have to give it to God so he can take it away. I don't know if you could, but wouldn't it be sad if a shell could be rebuild back on top of the egg? No, we want God to take that. We don't want that to be laying around for us to put things back on the egg. Somebody else at the table, take a piece of the shell and try to get it on the egg. Put the egg in the, in the bowl. And somebody look at the shell. See, you can find a piece that will fit back on the egg and find a place to, to fit it back on there. All right? No, don't dip it in pieces. There's one piece. Just get one piece of that shell. Can you find where it came from? Yep. No, because it is all broken away. You think you found the place, but the truth is you don't know. So you want to keep it clean. How are we going to keep it clean? Keep the shell off. How are we going to keep it clean? Somebody use my word. How are we going to keep it clean? Sanctify. Sanctify. <laughs> One of the great things is that when I'm putting eggs in my salad, uh, if I'm making, uh, you know, one of those salads and we we'll put eggs in it, I run it under water. Yes. What does water represent? Washing. 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 Yeah. And how does God wash us? Clean. 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 Yeah. Through his blood. Yeah. All right. We're deep now. Take the shell off it. Make sure it's clean. Amen. You got all kinds of stuff on your table. You got dried paper towels. You got wet paper towels. Make sure that it's clean. So that outer shell is the part, and it's usually the hardest to get off, right? When you first get saved, the challenge of changing your outer shell. Oh, my Lord. Look how some of y'all banged it. Sister Samar, did you have to bang it hard? Sometimes you have to bang it hard, right? Depends, right? Because some of us got 